Welcome to Buzz 101. During the course of this video, we will discuss the basics on using Buzz Tracker. Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the buttons on the interface. The first three buttons are New, Open, and Save. The next three are used to cut, copy, and paste in the Pattern Editor and Sequence Editor. Next comes the Pattern Editor, followed by the Machine Editor, and the Sequence Editor, more commonly referred to as the Sequencer. The next set of buttons control playback with the common Play, Stop, and Loop buttons, the red Record button being the exception as it records parameter automation, which we will cover later. The last three buttons are the Wavetable for loading your own sounds, the Notepad, and the Kill Sound button, which stops all audio processing. When you open Buzz, the Machine Editor is the first screen you will see. The Machine Editor is where you will add synthesizers, samplers, and other generators, as well as effects, to your song. You can recognize the Machine Editor by the Master Machine in the middle of the screen. <laughs> to add a new machine, right-click anywhere in the empty space around the Master Machine to display a menu. Move your mouse over New to display the Machine Index. The Machine Index is customizable, therefore yours may look different. The Machine Index we are using in this video is the Hamster Index, available on buzzmachines.com. Navigate the menu to the FSM Infector under Generators, Synthesis, Subtractive Synthesis. There are several subtractive synths available in Buzz but for now, let's select the infector. After you click on the machine, it will create a rectangular box representing the FSM infector. The way the FSM infector looks in this video may be different than what you see in your Buzz session. In the video, we have the Skins feature enabled. To enable Skins, go to the View menu and make sure there is a checkmark next to the Skins option. You can move this box anywhere on the screen by dragging it with the left mouse button. Before the machine will be able to produce sound, it has to be plugged into the master. To connect a machine to the master, hold down shift on your keyboard, position your mouse over the infector, hold down left click, and drag a line to the master machine. With the machines connected, we can now add some notes to our song. Let's go to the Pattern Editor. The Pattern Editor is where you will program notes, chords, and drum patterns, later to be arranged in the Sequence Editor. Probably the most prominent feature of the Pattern Editor would be the rows of value columns that cover most of the screen. Every column controls a specific function of the machine you are working with. You can tell what column you're on by looking at the status bar near the bottom of the screen. You can also tell what machine you're working in by looking at the Current Machine pull-down menu. Make sure that the current machine is set to the infector. You can move between columns by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. As you move, the text in the status bar will change to reflect what column you are currently on. The first thing we have to do is find the Note column. Most value columns are represented by two dots, whereas the note column is distinguished by having three dots. There is no definite location for the note column, but it is typically the first column after a break in the columns. You can navigate between column breaks by pressing tab to go right, and holding shift, then pressing tab to go left. In the infector, pressing tab once will bring us to the note column, entitled Note in the status bar. Notes can be entered into the infector by pressing the letter keys on your keyboard. The notes are laid out on the keyboard similar to a piano. The notes start on the letter Z with the note C and work their way up from there. Let's focus on the note column for a moment. The three dots that make up the note column each serve a purpose. The first dot represents the actual note. The second dot signifies if the note is a sharp or a natural, and the last dot specifies what octave the note is in. It's time to add some notes. If you make a mistake, 
To delete the value you are currently over, press the period key. Pressing the delete key will delete everything on the current row, including the values in other columns, as well as shift everything below it up one row. Alternatively, pressing the insert key will move the currently selected row and everything below it down one row. A word of warning. There is no undo button in Buzz. If you delete a value or push a row off the bottom of the pattern, it's gone. The same goes for machines, parameter settings, and everything else. In light of this, remember to save your Buzz session often and before making any drastic changes. Try reproducing this pattern on your own. Notice that the notes are all on the dark colored rows. These have to do with the 4-4 time signature that Buzz was designed to accommodate. At the default settings, there are four beats per pattern. In traditional music speak, a pattern would then be equivalent to one measure. Were you able to recreate the note pattern? When entering these notes, you would have used the letters Z, Q, D, the number 3, and the arrow keys on your keyboard. It might have gone something like this. With these notes in place, we can now use this pattern in the sequencer. To quickly get to the sequencer, press the Enter key on your keyboard. The Enter key quickly switches back and forth between the pattern editor and the sequencer. In the sequencer, there are some new tools and controls available. Let's go over the sequencer interface for a moment. To exhibit the features of the interface better, let's look at an already completed song. In the middle, we have the Pattern Sequencer. This is where the patterns you create will eventually get arranged into a song. To the right of the sequence is the Pattern Bank. This is the list of all the patterns that have been created. There is an individual bank for every machine. You add patterns to the sequence with the keys on your keyboard. The Pattern Bank controls what keys are bound to what patterns, and displays the keyboard key first, followed by the pattern name. Every generator machine you load will automatically create its own track in the sequencer. You can also create tracks for the effects machines you load. Each track is labeled at the top by the machine name. You can move around the sequence by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. When you press the arrow keys, the cursor, or selection block, will move. You can tell what row you're on by looking at the left side of the screen. The sequencer is divided up the same as in the pattern editor, just on a larger scale. In the sequencer, a 16-row pattern is only one row. This bar is the progress bar. When you press play, it will automatically start moving downwards, that is, until it reaches the loop bar, at which point it will either continue playing from the very beginning, or stop depending on if the loop button is turned on or off. To set the point at which the song loops, First, move the selection block up or down to a particular row, and then holding Control, press E on your keyboard. Let's get back to our original song. There is currently only one machine track, one available pattern, and a one row loop. Make sure that the selection block is on the first row, and press the number zero on the keyboard to insert a pattern. The pattern will display as two zeros. Make sure loop is activated and click the play button. You should hear something like this. Click the stop button. Insert pattern number 0 on rows 16, 32, and 48. The selection block will automatically advance every time you insert a pattern. On the row labeled 64, set the loop point with Control e To play the song from the beginning, you first have to move the progress bar to the top. To do this, use your mouse cursor to click the row numbers on the left. To go to the top, you must click on row 0. Press play now, and you should hear something like this.
We're almost done with this first lesson, but before we go, let's learn a few more fundamentals. Press Enter to return to the Pattern Editor. There are a couple more functions in the Pattern Editor that you can do with key combinations on your keyboard. Pressing Control Enter will create a new pattern, and pressing Control Shift and Enter will duplicate the current pattern. To delete a pattern, press Control Delete. Lastly, if you wish to change the length of a pattern or rename it to something more unique, you can press Control Backspace to open the pattern properties. Let's take a trip over to the machine editor to add an effect. We're going to put an effect between the infector and the master machine. The first step is to disconnect the infector from the master. We do this by right-clicking on the white triangle in between the two machines and selecting Disconnect Machines. Next, we have to choose an effect. Right-click in the empty space of the machine editor to bring up the machine index. Navigate to New, Effects, Delay, HD Combo Delay, and select the machine. Connect the infector to the combo by holding Shift on your keyboard and dragging a line between them. Also connect the combo to the master. Press play to hear the difference. For the final part of this tutorial, let's change the sound of the infector to something other than the default sound. There are two ways to do this from the machine editor. You can double click on the machine, or you can right click on the machine and select parameters to display the internal components of the machine. Try moving some of the sliders on your own. You can also browse through the sound presets by pulling down the menu on the left. That's all for this tutorial. Hopefully that should be enough to get you started and point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching. This concludes part one of Buzz 101 for Jess Cola Buzz Tracker.